But let's start at the place that we used to call White Hart Lane when it was a different stadium. It was next door. <laughs> um, I thought this was, you know, you look at the table, you look at Arsenal's lead, and you say, okay, these are situations where they can draw points. doesn't matter that Tottenham have been on the slide and everything. It's a derby. The yeah. wheels come off. But once again, with a little help from Hugo Lloris, um, and even beyond Hugo Lloris, yeah. those first 45 minutes, I thought, were really impressive. You can you want to parse those two goals out? Fine. It'd been nil nil at halftime. I would be sitting here really praising Arsenal's performance in that first half. Yeah, it was a demonstration of football. I think they they taught them a lesson. I mean, and the lesson for Spurs is that if you let that that this Arsenal team play, then they would just play you out of the park, and that's exactly what they did. There was too much freedom, too much time on the ball for a party for Zinchenko for the wide players. It was just too easy for Arsenal. They could have scored more. And even if, of course, the first goal, the mistake by Lloris, changes slightly the dynamic. But before that, Nketiah had a chance. And after that, they go chance after chance. And, and I was very surprised by the lack of intensity from Spurs in that first half again, because apart from the fans who were really up for it, and I was at the game, it didn't feel that the Spurs players were, were playing a North London derby. It, it felt like they were playing Aston Villa or some team like that. They were not yeah. in it. See, you can't have it both ways if you're Antonio Conte. You can't be Mr. Intensity and then not transmit that to yeah. your team. I, I thought that was missing. Um, and I thought, obviously, he made some tactical errors in the way he set up as well, um, which didn't help the team. I thought Spurs were better in the second half. They did create some chances. Yeah. Still thought Arsenal had the upper hand you know, throughout on, on, on the if, balance of opportunities. If Arsenal played like champions in the first half and defended like champions in the second half. That's what they did. And Ramsdale had a great game and, and Spurs could have, Spurs I think have the same high expect, expected goal than Arsenal. So they, they had their chance, but Arsenal played really like leaders. Do we fault Hugo Lloris for the second goal too? Nah, come on. He, don't see the, he doesn't see the ball leaving and I'm sorry, Romero can't turn his back. This is not how you defend. Come on. Other guard is where you are. I'm Romero and what? I, can't, I don't come for the block. I just turn my back and hope for the best. This is not, this is not defending. And I guess I, it's a question of which world champion you want to blame. Romero I blame Sessegnon for the Uri. first goal I, as well, to be fair. So it's never... Oh, yeah. So it's no, all Sessegnon. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> um, we have to talk about what happened at the very end. I'm going to try to sum this up as fairly as possible because I think there was something that happened before which people sort of forget. Um... So it's the end of the game. Ramsdale, um, obviously what we saw was Ramsdale going to collect his water bottle, uh, which he had left uh, on, on by the board yeah. behind his goal. And then there's a fan who, in a very weird, uncoordinated way, sort of jumps up on the hoarding and kicks him in the back, which leads to, uh, which, which sort of leads to, to, to a melee. Obviously everybody agrees you can't do that. Uh, the fan will never, you know, should never. I don't think they have yeah, any trouble identifying never, him too because much, you can yeah. see his face. You yeah. can actually see, I, I was looking at, I, I didn't notice the first time, but when I saw the, the afters again, you can see him after he does it, he realizes what he's done. Yeah, he's, he's trying to go he's quickly back. He's yeah. up the thing while everybody's going forward and yeah. shouting at Ramsdale. What I do wonder is what happened immediately before that. And by the way, I am not having, Ramsdale was phenomenal in the game. It is intense. I'm just putting this out as a viewpoint of what happens in the interaction with fans, right? Um, just before that, if you watch in the game, Ramsdale and Richarlison, they're, they're kind of joking with each other. Um, moments afterwards, there's the win. Ramsdale, when he said afterwards, he'd been giving stick to the fans, yeah. and, and it was back and forth, yeah, yeah. and some of the fans were enjoying it, and, and whatever. So the goal was in front of the, the white wall, so the closest to the cup than, exactly. than if he had been on the other side. At one point, Ramsdale visibly gets annoyed. I don't know if somebody shouted something or something. And he turns to the fans and he says something. Or shows or the press, yeah. He should, show, yeah. Somewhere I was, shows I the press, yeah. Properly, yeah. And then that's when Richarlison goes over and starts wagging. And, you know, again, until 30 seconds earlier, these two guys were yeah. kind of yucking it up, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, is it also, obviously I'm not putting any kind of blame on this, but is it also a reminder that, unfortunately with stadiums the way they are, without barriers, and I think it's good that there are no barriers, mm -hmm. you as a player have to remember that there are some crazies out there that will take any provocation. You still don't think that someone is going to jump over the advertising board to kick you in the back, you know? Like, so 
they give you stick, you give stick back, but you think he's safe anyway. So he's part yeah. of the game's... It, it's, it's a fine line. Trash, and I think, but it's a thin line, yeah. I right. think what we might lose is that back and forth. The players are like, I'm not going to take a chance because 99% of those guys are going to be normal. We'll just give it back and forth. And then there's going to be the 1% yeah, yeah, yeah. who's going to go and do something stupid and dangerous, yeah. which, is, which is what happened here. All right, Joe, let's get into this a bit more. And by the way, before people are going to have a go, we restate for the record, I am not blaming Ramsdale no, in any no. way. We Nobody deserves not. this. But I think if a fan in the midst of the emotion feels disrespected, most fans will react by calling Ramsdale a bad word or, or whatever. But there is that one guy, one idiot, potentially, yeah. who will go and do something dangerous. And, and, and I think... But to be fair, this is this is Ramsdale's personality. He's been doing this all season, and nothing had ever happened before. Before Sunday, yeah, well, fortunately, so, it doesn't happen. Very you know, but often. that's what I mean. Like you know, he, I don't think he will change, and he should not change because of one idiot. Yeah. Because that's what he does. But and, I, it, I and it did appear, like like I said, like like to be clear on this, you know, when he said afterwards he was giving and taking it, and it was good natured. It certainly appeared very good natured. It certainly was good natured with Richarlison yeah. until uh, un, 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 until the, that kind of final moment. I want to talk about Arsenal a little bit because obviously we saw standout performances from uh, from Partey, from, from Udegaard, from Zinchenko. I want to talk a little bit about the way Arteta set, sets up because it certainly looks as if, you know, some people have it as a 4-3-3, some people have it as a 4-2-3-1, but the basic concept is when they're on the ball, Zinchenko comes inside and yeah. becomes an additional midfielder. And you almost have an overload on the left-hand side where you've got Zinchenko, Shaka, and, uh, and Martinelli who are attacking on one side. And then on the other side, you have Bukayo Saka because Ben White doesn't attack in the same way. It's almost as if it becomes like a back three. And then it certainly... I'm not saying it leans heavily to the left because... I, again, I haven't seen like sort of their heat map zones of attack, but it does seem as if the idea is you've got more men on on the left hand side, on the right hand side you've got more space for Saka, which I think suits Saka and Martinelli's skill very well, um, and I think makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. Although there's there's a few times where White overlaps and and you know plays with Saka on that right-hand side when Zinchenko really rarely, I mean, he goes He's not an o- Zinchenko's not an overlapping fullback no, in the way White not. is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think well, that's why the fullback. asymmetrical fullback is perfect. One is inverted, the other one is sometimes more of a centre-back, sometimes makes that run on the overlap. And it's just, I think the structure of that team is just absolutely perfect. And I know they're a bit short and, you know, if someone important gets injured, I think they would, they would struggle to replace him. Like but Gabriel Jesus. Yeah, but that's maybe the one <laughs> position where they have someone who can come in who is who's still very good in what the manager wants him to do in and catch up. But f- for other positions, it might be a little bit different. But the structure and, and the um, what everybody knows what to do, where where the ball is and and where your teammate is. So if Zinchenko comes inside, then Chaka knows exactly that he has to cover a bit more on 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 the Zinchenko side of things. And all of that, I think that drill is they, they're so well drilled in the positional play and the awareness of where everybody is on that pitch. It's just, it was wonderful to see that first half really. And again, I think they were held by the fact that Spurs didn't put them under pressure whatsoever, which would be different when United go to the Emirates on Sunday. But still, it was just, it was just like a, yeah, it was, it was a perfect, in terms of movement and organization and understanding of each other's position and where, and what to do and where to be, it was, it was perfect. It was really a perfect first half. All right, a couple other points on Arsenal before we move on to Spurs, because I think there's a lot of questioning yeah. to be done of, of Conte's decisions here. One is that that party shot, which just hits so hard against the post. I mean, even in slow motion replay, it doesn't even look like slow mo. Or rather, it's weird because the, the players are all in slow motion, but the ball yeah, just looks so like fast. However, Pecker's moment, you watch yep. it again. Um, he doesn't hit the ball cleanly. He shins it. He shins it, yeah. Which is fine. I mean, again, <laughs> well, we said it's it. Not, it's not saying he didn't choose to shin it. No, no, no. But I think the ball maybe comes at him so quickly and the balance of his body is perfect, but he's still with his shin. <laughs> we, we said, we, you were aware, but when Darwin Nunez scored that goal, uh, 
Shinze as well in the in the FA Cup. I think he was when Rooney is called one of the greatest yeah, goals of all time when Rooney's goal. with his shin too. So it's not we're not saying it's bad to shin the ball. It's not. However, you don't have the same. You have no idea where the ball's yeah, going. Yeah, some go. control of the ball. And he's obviously not choosing to shin it. He's just no, trying no, yeah. to make contact exactly, somehow exactly. to send it towards. He's still the a ball. hell of a volley. To be fair. <laughs> it was unbelievable, incredible. And he's had an amazing game. And to be fair, we were saying that when we preparing for the show, the only defeat that Arsenal had, which was away at United with. The, the goal disallowed as well for Martinelli at nil nil. Party wasn't there in that game. He's unbeaten for Arsenal. He's been amazing for them this season. We we mentioned Spurs' lack of intensity, and obviously Richarlison is one of those guys who is Mister Intensity. And even before when he was warm, when he was warming up, you saw a little bit of uh, a little bit of an edge between him and his uh, uh, Brazil national team yeah. uh, teammate. Yeah, uh, it was Martinelli. Funny. So when you, as Spurs, you warm up on the, um, on the, by the touchline, of course, on the left of the tunnel, if you want. So that's where Arsenal were attacking in the second half. And Martinelli is about to take a corner. So he's at the corner flag. And Richarlison is there, kind of warming up. So Martinelli sees him and puts his hand out to kind of high five him or shake his hand. And Richarlison looks at him and just doesn't move and go like, you know, leave me alone kind of thing. And so the, the, uh, the Spurs fans loved it. Of course, Martinelli was a bit kind of baffled what we friends we play together for our country why are you not but it's a derby and Richarlison was like no way I'm shaking your hands right now at this moment in the game and he was pumped why so why not bring him on early why waiting so long if you're Conte yeah. and I know Spurs played better in the second half and were threatening at time but like Richarlison is so added value when you're chasing a game like that at home with the crowd and everything you played him on for the last 10 minutes it made no sense so I think Conte would say Look, we still create a chance of the second half. Ramsdale made some exceptional saves. We score a goal. And at 2-1, it's a derby. The whole ground comes alive. We come alive. We get back into it. I think that would be his yeah, explanation you can do if he'd that been with asked Richarlison that question, as well. right? You can do that with Richarlison as well. So I think the difficult... I think I think the reason it didn't happen with... with The reason he waited on Richarlison is that I don't think he wanted to lose his shape and move to look I'm not I'm giving you an explanation of what yeah, I think yeah, no, went no, no, through no. his mind I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm not justifying it right yeah, yeah. Um, when Spurs go 4-4-2 four, four, or 4-2-4 four, four, whatever as we saw Spurs get messy Spurs get really messy and they're and I think they become vul more vulnerable although they were they weren't good in the first half but they become more vulnerable to the counter and I think that was his concern his control was let's get back into the game by scoring a goal with our initial formation, the 3-4-2-1. Now, hindsight, 2020. Also, I would have thought that from what we've seen of Hong Min Son. Or what we didn't see. Or what we didn't yeah. see from Hong Min Son. The logical thing would have been, if you're going to make a change earlier and you don't want to lose your shape, put Richarlison for Son. 100%. On the other hand, Conte would say, oh, but if what? I put Richarlison for, for Son... I've got a problem because then I only have three strikers. I don't have another striker to bring on. And sorry, Brian Heal. Unless you want to talk about Brian Heal. Right. I don't have another option there. But why do you need another option? Because towards the end, if, if it's 2-1, I, I want another attacking player on the pitch. I know, but you, you keep Son, you play with 10 men. Because that's what I mean. Yeah. We all love Hung Min Son. He, last season was an amazing season for him. But this season is not, this is not the same story. He's been dreadful for most of it, apart from the hat-trick in 30 minutes against Leicester three months ago. But apart from that, he's been anonymous at best. Yesterday, he was not in the game at all. They played with 10 men. And he missed a chance at the end when he shot. The shot was not on target. He got lucky to get a corner. And, but there was, there was just nothing in his game. And I just think you kept him on. Why? You, you kept him on because you thought, oh, but we have to keep him on because he can make something happen. No, he can't. This season, he cannot. Maybe last season, yeah. yeah. This season, he, can, he cannot make something I mean, happen out of nothing. Look, I think these are the big calls that, that managers have to make. And from the outside, it always looks very obvious, right? Um, this guy's not producing. You've got, you know, Brazil's starting center forward on the bench. Yeah. Bring him on in place of Son. On the other hand, I can also see his point, and I can also see how managers, especially people like Conte, they have this thing about, you know, great players. And when he looks at, if you, you, know, you would ask, like, who is Tottenham's uh, most important player or most decisive player not named Harry, you would say Hongman Son, right? But not this season. But, yeah. No, no, no. But I'm saying is... In general. In yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. 
managers like Conte, I, and I think this has been a thing throughout his career, he has this idea of the champion, the superstar. And yeah, this, has been a, th- this has been a recurring theme with him. He's always slow to accept when the superstar isn't playing like a superstar. Mm. You know, he always seems to have this idea that, oh, but he can, even if he's playing badly, he can change the game for you. Yeah. Um, I and mean, maybe it's partly superstition. I know the analytics crowd wouldn't like it. The analytics crowd would look at it and be like, oh, well, Son is doing this. Now I mean, about, yeah, you know. yesterday was like, shocking. I, but I, I think this is one no, situation maybe. where I with just hindsight. don't understand. And to be fair, I think he, he played and he, he even, he backed up my point by saying after the game, I was kind of happy that we didn't lose our head to concede more goals. So he played not to concede more goals in the second half. And of course, they were never going to play as bad in the fir- as in the first half because they were terrible. So they were always going to be a bit better and be a bit more on the front foot, which they should have been from the beginning in a derby well, like I this. I want to ask about the, the, the front foot thing because effectively, I mean, on paper it was a 3 4 2 one. In practice, it was a 5 4 one, right? Yeah. yeah. And not just that, but they seem to be happy to also concede the flanks, They're almost as if they're telling Arsenal, like, okay, go ahead, cross the ball, right? Um, and, you know, ultimately they contained Arsenal. Most of the chances came from. Well, Came from shots from you know f- from outside the box, whether whether the Odegaard one or, or or the Partey one, the two Odegaard shots actually, I think. Yeah, but the two Enkechia chances, which are two big saves by Llores, are like in the box, you know, like through well Martinelli over the head, and then the the Chaka through ball. It, it looked to me though that that that, that kind of passivity for a guy who's built his career on teams that are aggressive and intense and reflect his personality. I don't know what's going on. Is there something deeper there? Maybe. I mean, to go back to your point, and I think it's a great point. So the other guard goal is a great goal. We said so much space for everybody, party to find uh, Saka to win the second ball, all of that. But before that, at one nil, other guard has the same shot, the one that Yori saves on yeah. his on the same. It's the same move. So if you're Conte on the bench or one of his assistants, or even even if you are a Spurs player, you think, hang on. Okay, this was too easy. We can't we can't let that happen again because the next time, then other guard can score. And then what, ten minutes later, exactly the same move. And How I, you cannot react when your Conte is sitting down on the bench and say, "Hey boys, you know, say to Saar, say to Hoiberg, well, say to one of the, your three centre backs," because let's let's not, let's remember you have three centre backs for Eddie and Ketia on his own. How can you not say to a Longley or Romero or Dyer if other guard is in a position, one of you has to come and close him down? So. I think the reason that they can go and close it down is that they're playing too deep. I think that is on the midfielder. Um, they were 5v3. No, no. I, I, I absolutely get that. And I think here you get to another decision that he made. And I, you, know, you don't want to be critical of a young player, but it is a very unconte like move based on what we know of his career and his trust of veterans and whatever to go and to play and, and to give his, 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 his starting debut to a 20-year-old guy like Popsar in a game like this, which is yeah, big, yeah, not I just agree. as a North London derby, there's surprised. top four implications or whatever. Now, obviously, there was no Bentancourt, but he had Bissouma and Skip yeah. on the bench. You know, Skip, who they gave a new contract to earlier this year, by the way. So I'm assuming they're fit. I, I don't know. Or they, they, I, didn't, I mean, Bissouma came on, so you would think that... That surprised me. Now, yeah. is this the kind of... Was, do you think this was Conte going on a limb, or do you think this was saying like, oh, let's no, try something is he, different? Or is he trying to make a point? I'm um, again about recruitment, and you know, and we're still in January. You can sign midfielders because look, I have to play this 20, 20 year old kid who is very talented, but not ready for that kind. And then I think he I made think, two substitute appearances in the Premier League. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This. And I, I don't think Saar did badly at all, and I'm a big fan. Obviously, he was in France before, but I think that also impacts on Hoiberg. Who then by the was trying to chase and chase the shadow of Odegaard everywhere on the page, because I think Odegaard uh, Oiberg also was quite conscious. Oh, okay, why is why is the young kids going to do here? Do I need to cover? Do I need to? Uh, well, and and I think that also impacted on Oiberg, who didn't have a. He's been really excellent this season, Oiberg, and so that that maybe also played on. Hoiberg's and specifically defense. on the Odegaard goal, if you remember, it was a goal kick from. It was a goal kick. Oh, yeah, clearance from Lloris. I mean, uh, it might not have been a goal kick. Or I think it was a goal kick, actually. No, was it? Okay, I thought it was Lloris playing long. No, you're right. No, yeah, sorry. It was, it was Lloris choosing to, to, to yeah, sort of punt it long in the air. The Arsenal defence recover it. Saar tries to counter-press, and the ball just goes past them. So, you know, maybe that yeah, is yeah. one of those mental errors Completely. that maybe Bentoncourt wouldn't, wouldn't make or that 
you know you would expect skip yeah. or, or or basuma not to make but i how do we still feel about spurs finishing top four if you're going to give me a percentage chance because they're five points back yeah but you know what if you look at the, i know it feels like it's later in the season than it is but we still have more than half a season to go or half a season yeah yeah no that's um, true but they have to play City twice again. I mean, I know City, and I mean, you, we used to say that by saying that <laughs> they're, they're going to lose twice, which it's not the case right now with City. But just to just to highlight the fixtures, they will have to go to Liverpool. They will obviously host Chelsea. They've played Arsenal twice now, so they, they will be tough games to come home and away for sure. I just don't. There's five, the gap is five points now, right. and I just don't think I don't think the top four right now: City, Newcastle, United. And Arsenal will drop many points. I really don't think so. So it's a, it's a hell of a task for Spurs to make that ground back over. I think it would be United or or Newcastle potentially. Newcastle maybe the one really that they I, have to catch. I don't know. It's see. I would view the tough. fact that you're they will have to go to Newcastle by the way as well because they lost at home against them. I would view the fact that you're playing City twice as just a great opportunity. Six oh. points clear. You get six points off oh, of City. Oh, I can't sudden, believe right? you said that. We have better goal difference because you didn't oh. concede those extra goals in the second half. Can't believe we cared because we just City fans. But I'll tell you what, the way City have been playing, we'll see. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.